Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks, another lockdown news roundup. Only thing is, most of the fake stream news is garbage, designed to make people afraid or to divide them. And what I covered earlier with the two tests a week from the UK was probably the most relevant piece of news. So I'm going to cover just some more oddities here, which are just good examples of just plain badness. Temptation. Okay, temptation again, another subject that I have talked about in regards to all that is going on at the moment. It's very hard to not draw a comparison to old stories, myths, the Bible, and all of that jazz. But we all know temptation is a tactic to lure someone into doing something in spite of their better judgment. It's mostly used these days as a sales tactic theme common to many of the marketing and advertising techniques used to make products more attractive. But it seems today we, we're seeing it used in a whole different way to get people to get the jib jab. Look at this now from the USA. Krispy Kreme is offering a sweet incentive to encourage more people to get the COVID vaccine. Starting today, customers who show a valid COVID vaccination card at any Krispy Kreme store will get a free original glazed donut. No purchase is necessary and the offer is good through the end of the year. The chain says the promotion is a long term for a reason as not el everybody is eligible for the vaccine quite yet. There you go, Krispy Kreme. They'll give you a free donut every day this year if you've got the jab and if you can prove it with a jib jab card. How does this even exist? If we are in a crisis, then people shouldn't be needing to be persuaded to get the jab by using the temptation of a free fecking crispy creme donut every day for the rest of the year. This, this is a big company. Crispy Cream is owned by a multinational corporation. Strangely enough, that corporation's name is called Jab. Jab Holdings Company, which is owned by a super, one of those super rich families that have been going for 200 years, it says here. So they must have done a deal with the government in the USA. So what kind of message is this sending out? Get the jab and you can get a free donut every day. A lovely free sugary donut, 365 a year you can get. Now are Krispy Kreme, are these donuts good for your health? No, they're not good for your health. They have 250 to 300 calories per donut. That's a lot of calories for a donut packed with sugar and fat. I mean, it's fine to have one here and there, but to offer people a free one every day? Doesn't America already have an obesity problem? And now you're encouraging people to get the jab and saying, oh, you know, you need the jab, it's good for your health. But you're tempting them with offers of a free donut a day for the rest of the year, which is most certainly not good for your health bit of a contradiction. So I guess this joins that other form of temptation they were doing in America. I did a video about it quite a while back, I believe in Washington, where they were offering free cannabis. If you got the jab, what next? Well, expect to get maybe a free McFlurry every day from McDonald's, or a mini wrap from KFC, or discounts from your favorite stores, or discounts on things from Amazon, or, you, or maybe you can get four months free of Amazon Prime, or Netflix free for a year. It will be interesting to see how far they go with the temptation strategy. I scan through the news every day, and I constantly see, recently, McDonald's promotions appearing in online features masquerading as news items. See how corrupt the fake stream media has become. Selling news articles to the highest bidder. If ever there was a clear sign the fake stream media doesn't care about you is when you see a McDonald advert masquerading as news in your online newspapers. Another example of the fakeness of the fake stream media. And here in the UK, we have the idea of freedom as form of temptation, constantly being promoted to everyone. Or get the jab, it's your chance to get back to normal. But temptation is more obvious in the form of being able to go to gigs, to go to festivals, the Reading Festival, the Leeds Festival, and all of that as a temptation for the younger generation to get that certificate to enable you to go to these festivals, which they were pushing just the other day. And here I see now the first celebrity 
pushing the vaccine passports in the UK. This is Michael Ball, an incredibly annoying soulless cruise ship cabaret style singer that turns up in drab shows in the West End. He was very annoying before, he has now become even more so now. If you're asking me my personal views on having a, a, a vaccine passport, I'm 100% for it. First off, it's just easy then. Yeah. You just go boom. Yeah. You know, I've done everything I can to get us back to normality. And, if, and, and it's fine. If someone chooses not to have the vaccine, entirely their prerogative, but then it is entirely the prerogative of a restaurant owner, a theatre owner, a pub owner, uh, anyone on a bus, uh, to not accept their business. So that's another sellout celebrity to add to the cancelled forever list. Not that he was on any list of mine, I'd rather pull out my toenails than listen to this guy singing, but that's just my personal opinion. But what he says here... First off, it's just easy then, yeah. you just go boom. It's just easy, you just go boom. What a mindless imbecile. This is the first sign of the celebrities getting involved with pushing the passport certificate. And he seems to have to, to not have a care in the world about what that will entail, what the results will be, the two-tier society it will cause, the discrimination, the division. No, not for Michael Ball. It's just easy, you just go boo. First off, it's just easy then, yeah. you just go boom. Oh no, stuff all of them issues involved. Michael doesn't care. All this pitiful selfish clown cares about is him getting back on the stage so he can earn money to sing and dance in these so-called sad entertainment spectacles. Well, sorry, Michael and all the other celebrities. The veil has been lifted. The Wizard of Oz has been exposed for what he truly is. Our eyes are wide open and your celebrity nonsense rings hollow in this new world. It may be an ugly world, but at least we can now see these people for who they truly are. And they are now worthless. The age of celebrity is over. The age of truth has begun. And frankly, I hope the whole theater enterprise collapses just off of what this clown has said. What he says here is unnecessary, discriminatory and counterproductive and 100% divisive. He has no moral compass. A totally vacuous individual who, like all of the other celebrities, appear now as shallow non-entities whose words resoundly ring hollow. I only ever once went to the theater. I went to see five guys named Mo. I couldn't stand it. I left after 20 minutes. Theater shows to me are just fake. So fake. So I couldn't care less about the theatre. And I will not help enable or be participating within a two-tier checkpoint society of this kind or choose to associate with people like this. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to HugoTalks.com. It's the only place where I get to keep the subscribers. I want to build up a network of like-minded people, a tribe, so to speak. So come on over and subscribe before the YouTube curtain falls on this channel. And I'll see you later.